I feel like we have a pretty um, unique is a good word. We have an interesting trifecta of what I would call several challenges, but not barriers to student achievement. We've got, it, and it depends on the year, anywhere from 86 to 90 percent of our kids qualify for free and reduced lunch. Um, 60 to 64 percent of our kids identify as Hispanic, many from bilingual homes and 42% of our kids receive special ed services pre-K to 5. And just to put that in context, the state of Rhode Island average for special ed in a school is 15%, and in Providence, it's 16%. So we're more than triple the state and city average. And um, we're full inclusion. Every pre-K classroom in our building is inclusion, and then every strand from K to 5, we have one general ed class and one inclusion classroom co-teach from K all the way up to grade five. I teach fifth grade inclusion and I have a classroom of 22 and typically every single year I have anywhere between 10 to 12 special needs students that are on my caseload. The caseload that I have is mild to moderate but it ranges anywhere from learning disabled kids, ED kids, autism kids, um, MR kids, so my caseload really varies but it's mild to moderate. So when we were doing the differentiated instruction for my special needs students, we found that a lot of the playlists were just, they were, they were a little too difficult for them. So it would either be me sitting with them, walking them through each of that, or using the time to do intervention time on their IEPs. So Dr. G decided that it would be much more beneficial to them to focus on interventions and to focus on RTI for things that are actually in their IEPs. So during that time, if we're doing multiplication for the week or we're doing it for the month or division or fractions, I would work on their level. So I would use that time to go out with them. It would either be one-on-one -on -one or one-on-three, -on -three, depending on if there were students that were on the same level as another child in my classroom. And that was really amazing time that I had. I've never had that before in my whole career at actually had time this year with the summit model to be able to take kids out and do interventions. The computer gives you a lot of interventions that you can use. I use some of them. I just like to use the interventions that I kind of created myself. I find that some of them on the computer are really beneficial and then other ones are just very structured for these kids and I try to make it just a little more fun for the students. Like I have a student who is obsessed with Spongebob. So if we're doing math problems, I'll try to incorporate Spongebob and Plankton into it and it just makes it a lot more fun for them and you can see them being a lot more interested in it. I notice when I take some of the interventions from the computer, they just, they'll do it and they go through the motions, but when you add things in, like cars, I have another child who's obsessed with NASCAR. So you bring NASCAR into it and he gets really excited about it and it makes him want to learn it a little bit more. Just makes it a little more fun for them. But usually that time with my intervention time, they're not usually on the computers for intervention time. We try to do that one day a week and the other two days that I'm doing intervention with them, I'll pull them aside. So if I notice that three of my students are doing really well on multiplication, but they're also struggling with division, I might do a little workshop on that division as long as they're all on the same level. And then for pulling the students out, I mean, I work with them. I have nine students on my caseload right now. I have one student who's on alternate assessment. Um, so she doesn't even qualify for this. She still does and I still pull her out for her interventions, but the playlist, she's kind of just exempt from it because she's on alternate assessment. So she doesn't really do this testing that much. But when I am actually working with the students, it's, it's kind of sporadic. I mean, I have a list that I go, I have to meet with them every single week. So whether it's Monday, I meet with two of the students, and then Wednesday, I meet with four of the students, Friday, I meet with the rest of the students, or maybe I do a workshop and I meet with all 10 of them at once because it's something that they're all in need of. Maybe it's something that I taught a month ago and I just want to see, are these interventions working? And I want to see, okay, these two students, I need to check to see if you are retaining this knowledge. I'm going to pull you out, give you a quick quiz. If they pass that quick quiz, then I'm going to move on to somebody else. It's all just, it depends on where we are in the, in the year and how well they're doing. If they're progressing, if they're kind of flatlining, if they're degressing. I have a lot of students who progressed really well for my caseload and I started like kicking back on the interventions. I still meet with them as much, but it would be more student-driven learning rather than teacher-driven learning. My interventions tend to be a lot of teacher talk and that's the last thing that I want, but that's where they need at first. And then I found that the students who were really progressing, it was less teacher talk and more student-driven learning.